Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. There was four earthquakes today along the new Madrid fault line. All fairly shallow. 6.5 kilometers is about four miles in depth. Um, let's see, the largest being two at 1.5. Doing some research into this area. I was surprised, I did not know that there is a failed rift going through this area. Uh, magnetic anomalies. Uh, the failed rift is from years ago when the earth was new and the continents were moving around and dividing. Now I've talked about the area up in Michigan. This is a failed rift system that extends up through here. There's another one that goes along here by the Appalachians. I did not know that the new Madrid had a failed rift system that extends from Arkansas all the way up to Kentucky. There's also heat coming up from down below from ancient volcanic activity, uh, magma that comes up from the earth crust that's still there. Yeah, volcanic activity. This area is capable and has had magnitude 8.1 earthquakes in the past. USGS with the government did a scenario of a magnitude 7.3, a fairly deep earthquake of 19.1 kilometers and what to expect in such a disaster. A Twitter post shows some of these rift systems that never fully completed. Yeah, originally the continent was going to divide. Here's the one that goes up through Michigan. You can see that here. And we got the uh, Numerid and the one by the Appalachian Mountains. Yeah, we got one up there by Texas too. And recently, um, it seems like all these ancient fault zones have been reactivated. A friend sent to me, I want to say thank you very much, some very interesting information about how, in fact, earthquakes and volcanoes eruptions have increased. Now, this goes back to 1800. Here you can see, yeah, there's definitely been an increase in volcanic eruptions. Earthquakes worldwide since 1997. I'll have to bring this over. I can't make it any smaller. Um, and I'll pull it down for you. You can see that earthquakes worldwide have increased. 1997, 16,469. And we'll come down here to last year. This year is not over. Uh, 160,281. So far this year, as of October, uh, 132,008. October, it has 12,489. The year before, 10,348. Um, 2017, 9,342. Yeah, they have greatly, steadily increased. You can see that here since 1997. Graph showing known historically active volcanoes, numbers of volcanoes reported to be active each year and population. And this goes back to 1400. And a 10 year running means of the same data, thick red line is also based on reported eruptions. Those with uncertainty dates greater than one year are not included, nor are uncertain eruptions. Uh, populations on the right, world's estimated human population data, etc. And I'll bring that over. Known historically active volcanoes have increased. Yep. And then, yeah, we can see the population. Seems to be rising with the population for some reason, huh? This Twitter post is from Jonathan, Jonathan Oosting. Maybe it was originally posted by Lisa going back to the 1990s they did a lot of study on the magnetic anomaly going through this rift system and uh, yeah a lot of data to absorb this paper I found was for a 7.7 .7 scenario used in the uh, has US study the MAE study delineates substantial damage to the highway infrastructure as a result of the earthquake sh shaking a paper as of 2009, 10 years ago, estimated that roughly 15 major bridges across rivers in the region would be damaged and impassable. 
In addition to carrying high volumes of traffic, many of the bridges also support major pipelines and communication lines. This region of the U.S. is a central corridor for ground shipping, such as FedEx, and is based in Memphis. A significant fraction of all U.S. goods and products, commodity flows pass through the Midwest region, which includes the new Medrid Seismic Zone. And then for some reason, when you click on the page, it says page is not found. USGS has removed it. They're expecting insurance company payments to help with recovery. Yeah, how many of those insurance companies will actually go broke? Economic losses. Like I said, this is dated, um, yeah, kind of out of date. But back then, Wabash Valley area was $25 billion of economic losses. St. Louis, $310 billion. Um, another area of St. Louis. 215 billion dollars memphis tennessee 90 billion dollars in losses and that's for a magnitude 6.6 .6 and a 6.5 6.4 uh, if it was a 7.7 .7, 290 billion dollars in losses 7.5 150 billion dollars in losses and a 7.3 115 billion dollars in losses i believe this paper is 10 years old Value of losses across, what, eight states, I believe it is. Uh, red being, of course, extremely high. And it's all done by zip codes, it says here. I'll bring this down a little bit. Yeah, value of exposed risk in eight state study. Illustrating concentrations of value by zip codes. Six urban studies are indicated in italics which I don't see. I don't know. Here we have another image of the 1811-1812 earthquake and what they figured which areas subsided, um, what areas uplifted was in brown, and intense fissuring which was down here in the yellow. Yeah, this is real foot here, real foot which became a lake which originally was just a swampy area. Submergence, the dark blue, so there's Real Foot Lake, now a lake. Here's the other area of um, submergence. And also along here. Yeah, that's a lot of area to suddenly sink. Using Google Earth, you can see the areas where there was sand blowholes. All these are blowholes where when the earthquake occurred, yeah, jets of sand mixed with the water came shooting out of the ground. I mean, in, you know, looking at the size of some of this stuff, it's like, wow. Yeah, I did not know it was so great. Yeah, look at that. Blowholes. These are all blowholes from 1811 earthquake. You can see where faults probably opened up. Yeah, more blowholes. Yeah, it's just amazing. They're not really sure what fault where the actual eruption of the 1811 earthquake took place. You can see we got different faults that go through here. This here is an image of the magnetic anomaly, the rift zone. I don't it's not very good, um, but it's actually very wide and extends from Missouri, Arkansas up to Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee. Um, I guess you could tell by the white spots where it's whiter compared to the outside area. This is the rift zone. Another image from USGS. Yeah, it actually extends, widens out over Illinois and Indiana. And I'll pull it down a little bit. Yeah, Mississippi. I'm going to go into Garbins. Um, an elongated block of the Earth's crust lying between two faults and displaced downward relative to the blocks on either side of a rift valley. And they figure about 15 kilometers down, it is filled with uh, magma, hardened magma, from east central Arkansas to southwestern Kentucky. The real fit Garbin is clearly expressed as a north northeast trending. A 70 kilometer wide feature 
that's about 43 miles with an exceptionally linear margin. The subdued anomaly pattern over the Garbin reflects the relative greater depth of crystalline basement beneath a thick sedimentary section. Now this paper I believe is from 1999. Magmatic basement on the northwest and southeast flanks of the Garbin is approximately 1.2 to 2.5 kilometers deep respectively. So it's a failed roof system 43 miles wide that has filled in with magma and sediment. We know you should know that roof systems are a source of volcanic activity. That's why there's magma hardened magma down there. Guineas and others in 1982 described a linear gravity feature called the Missouri Gravity Low as a 120 to 160 kilometer wide gravity low that extends from the mid-continent rift system to southeastern Nebraska 700 kilometers southeast to the real foot Garbin in northwest Tennessee. They interpret the Madrid GL as a failed rift that was directly related for the formation of the granite rhyolite terrain of southern Missouri. Rifting reported may have formed a low density crustal homogeny at the base of the crust or in the middle crust between four and eight uh, kilometers. The present-day seismicity pattern suggesting several linear active zones. Three principal linear zones are the northeast trending zone from Mark Tree, Arkansas to Carothersville, Missouri. The north-northwest trending zone from Dyersburg, Tennessee to New Madrid, Missouri. And the north-northeastern trending zone near New Madrid to Charleston, Missouri. A secondary active seismic zone such as the east-west trending zone between Bloomfield and Malden, Plutons and the one north of the Covington Pluton are also apparent. Two of the three devastating 1811-1812 earthquake series occurred near Mark Tree, Arkansas and New Madrid, Missouri. So here we have Mark Tree and they figure the earthquake occurred somewhere between here and I gotta pull this out and up here this is probably the fault that ruptured during the 1811 earthquake Guineas and others in 1982 pointed out that many of the epicenters in the new Madrid seismic zone are within the region defined by the intersection of the Missouri Gravity Low and the Real Foot Grabin. That's an area of the rift that's filled in. The correspondence of seismicity and this intersection is remarkable considering that the only active section along the 400 kilometer long Real Foot Rift, that's 250 miles long, axis occurs within this 100 kilometer wide intersection zone. 100 kilometers is about 60 miles. For example, southwest of this intersection zone, near the intersection of the axis of the real foot grabbing, and the southwest margin of the Missouri Bathleth earthquake frequency along the MTC seismic zone is considerably less than within the intersection zone. Outside of the intersection zone to the northeast and within the Graben, historic earthquakes are rare. And going back to this other paper, they say that analysis of a range of a scenario indicating that even moderate earthquakes, a 6.1 to a 6.5, adjacent to major urban areas will generate total losses in the range of 10 to 100 billion dollars. Now that was as of 2008. Insurance payments are forecast to be 60 to 80 percent of total economic losses. And like I said, the link to this 7.3 scenario, yeah, it doesn't exist anymore. And that was a very deep earthquake. You know, the shallower the earthquake, the more damage they do cause. A little bit longer than I wanted to make, but I thought it was some really interesting information. Seeing how, in my opinion, the weakening of the magnetic field has once again reactivated these 
failed rift systems and I've been showing you stuff about that with these earthquakes they've been having up by Chicago and Michigan and even Ohio yeah and we all should be prepared for the worst um, yeah and with the increase in volcanic and earthquakes yeah you can't deny that thank you for sending me those papers by the way so if you have any thoughts or comments or questions put it down below please subscribe please thumbs up my videos please stay safe and I'll talk to you later God bless you bye